have some very successful and strong black student spaces such as African Student Union and our projects because of the men that were here. And I'm so happy to see all of you here. It is great. Just give it up for you guys. Because you guys look great. <laughs> what it means to remember something, right? We walk down, we see Campbell Hall, we see Royce Hall. These are all a commemoration of something. They're containers for the names of people and they give uh, an idea of, of what happened and contributed to this university. But oftentimes for oppressed and marginalized people, we have to remember our own heroes and create space for them to inform our actions. And I think that's what brings us here tonight, this act of remembrance, which is so critically important because when we remember, we are blessed with perspective. Yeah. We are blessed with obligation mm -hmm. and a responsibility to continue in the footsteps of those who made our presence here possible. Mm -hmm. And so here we are in Campbell Hall to discuss the legacies of, of John Huggins and Bunchy mm -hmm. Carter, right? In 1968, when Eric Huggins and John Huggins left Lincoln University to head to be a part of a mass movement that was occurring here in California, right? After they saw the Black Panther Party storm the Sacramento State Capitol. When we talk about Bunchy Carter, right, the mayor of the ghetto, a black man who was organizing his community, but traveled to open to be a part of a, a movement, of, of a movement to come together when they allowed righteousness to guide their footsteps, their actions, and their movements, to let it fill their hearts. We are still in the same historical moment, right? Police brutality. We have black people fighting for housing, being pushed from urban centers. We are struggling for health and education in the era of a fascist leader. We have to remember, that's centrally important, right? We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We don't have to start anew. We have to engage in the act of remembrance, yeah. right? That Matulu Shakur is still in prison, right? That Jamil Alameen is still in prison. Brothers and sisters who fought for our liberation are still in prison. That Koesi Balagoon, that Geronimo Pratt, these are members of the Black Panther Party who fought for our liberation that still exists. That, that pass and transition, and it's important to engage in those acts of remembrance because they inform what we do tomorrow. And so I just encourage all of us to remember that people came to this university with the intention of giving back to their people, mm -hmm. that they used education as a tool for liberation, yes. not for individual advancement yes. or achievement, that they didn't come here to make a whole gang of money, but they came and fought here so that they could take what they learned here back into the community, whether that was through survival programs or just conversations that you would have on the block. And we have that same obligation because we have to remember if you forget, it allows you to forego those responsibilities and obligations. But once you engage in the act of memory, you now have new commitments that must be fulfilled. So I'd like to extend my, my sincerest gratitude to the elders in the room for your sacrifice, because without you, I would not be here today. Thank you very much. Peace, everybody. Peace. Peace, everybody. Peace. I just like need some energy spoken word is a call and response it comes from black church right i'm sending this energy out i need to send it back and it's not energy that i'm just sending to you because i don't need it i'm sending it to you because i need it so like can y'all help hold each other accountable like can we be accountable to share energy right now yeah. can we do it yeah. Yeah. okay cool i'm you know don't be leaving me up here like <laughs> okay so i wrote this piece um it's interesting because i had a feeling that i was going to be asked to perform for this um but I didn't have any, I didn't have any intention because I had, I pulled myself back from UCLA, not from my activism, but from <coughs> campus so much. Uh, but this piece came to me the second before Alicia asked me to perform. So it's literally for this space. So that's why we went to have it. Right? It's called If I Was Stop Today. We say hands up, don't shoot. I'm not a monster, don't shoot. I bleed red like you. Please don't spill me on this sidewalk like some spoiled chocolate milk. I came from the breast of the Most High, and honestly, I'd rather die than assume the position for you. We march saying, hands up, don't shoot. But am I marching for the right to surrender? The right to never be armed because I have been used as a weapon for so long, I can't be trusted to responsibly use myself because I'm catastrophically powerful, because I'm that lethal, because I have the potential motive and mindset willing to shoot a pig and transform a nation, and that's a problem. Like Baldwin said, I'm a problem. Well, who and whose problem am I? A problem for white supremacy? A problem for black femicide? For trans 
xenophobia, exploitation, and ex-immigration, a problem for them is a positive to me, for us. So no, I will not put my hands up. No, I will not ease my way into your arms, into your laws, into your cold world of carceral coffins and divisive lies. Blue eyes don't want to truly see me unless I roll back and die. I could have no hands. And to them, I'm always holding a gun. No eyes, but they still, they saw me run. I will not put my hands up. Waving a little white flag will not heal the white imagination. It will not rebuild moving home. It will not resurrect Fred Hampton, John Huggins, Punchy Carter, or their comrades. It will not leave Angela unscathed. It will not feed those who still need free breakfast. It will not bring down the babies returned to heaven because they weren't wanted in their black form in their most problematic state, by the state, alive and young and untampered with. I won't put my hands up because I am armed. I am dangerous and I want you dead. For all you have done, for all you will do, for all you won't do, and you know that. Let's not play cop and robber anymore, LAPD. You knew exactly when you pulled me over whether I would live or die. Either way, it will be at your hand. Either way, you are writing the script and flipping it at your whim. You are rubbing your gun and having necrophilic dreams of sin. You will take power over me by any means. But what you are truly looking for is a soul. No amount of my surrender Begging, pleading, raw suffering could put the human back into you. No amount of stop and frisk and femicide can fill the void inside. You are a dying creep. <coughs> a human mosquito. A zoo-keeping zombie. The two-legged fly that seeks to feed off life, hoping to absorb love and tradition, but all you touch dies. That's what I wish I could put into my hands and place into you a beating heart. The feeling of black survival, brown love, third world bravery, and first world struggle. The looks I received from my grandmother when she told me I am her legacy. The look my brother couldn't give me on his deathbed. Still eyes that still can't look back, encased on my altar, branded in my brain. The face of my nieces who have pure black magic in their eyes and joy paints into their hue. I have to put my hands deep into myself take out a sample of my soul, give you a taste, and then lay hands on you like my mama do, for you to believe that letting me live is doing the right thing. For you to remember who you are, for you to have the strength to look in the mirror every day and not hate yourself for your deviltry, but you'd rather I put my hands up. You'd rather I make this easy for us, but I won't. I won't. I won't fold this time. I know I've been rehearsing for this scene since I've had brown skin again and again in my mind. I know I said I wouldn't be the hero in this moment. I promised I would shuck and jive and win the war by losing the battle, but I don't and I can't and I won't. I freak in the presence of false gods. I forget protocol. I can no longer tell if I've been frightened to death or frozen alive, so I put my hand over my heart. It's warmth reminds me I'm not ready to die, and you shoot me through it. Where do I go now? Where's the winner's circle? Did I make my ancestors proud? Does my mama understand that I'd rather be above her than under them? I mean, I'd rather be with her, but why'd they put me over? Where do I go? What is my soul now that I've died? Am I barred from Baptist heaven? Is my unwillingness to surrender considered suicide? Am I sanctified? Will people praise my name for not knowing how to minimize myself in the presence of white power? Who will open their doors for me? What has been dealt as my fate? I'm at the gate, and if I die before I wake, I hope my mama's heart don't break. I only did what I know how to. Never back down. heart is so full from experiencing that, from being present in this room, in this moment with y'all, recognizing who had to die so that we could be here, yes. Yes. recognizing who had to lose their life, who had to lose their family, yes. who had to lose their husbands, who had to lose their fathers for us to be here. Yes. And I'm so humble and I'm so grateful for that. And I'm getting my master's degree in African American studies because these people fought for this department to exist. 
And I want to share this piece with y'all because this piece represents my experience here at UCLA. I am only here because of them and I got here and the first week I got here we was on the same stuff. First week I got here, it's a black face party. Black students feeling like they're not getting what they deserve on this campus. So we still protesting and we still fighting. And this poem represents a moment for me. A lot of y'all may have heard it before. I did it at the very first protest. This will be my last time performing this piece on this campus. And I'm doing this in memory of the people who lost their lives, in memory of the people who made sure that we could be here, that we could have community here. This piece is called I Can't Breathe. For all of those who physically lost their breath and for us who still feel like we can't breathe, right? One. One and then the two and two. Two and then the three and three. Three and then the four and then you gotta, then you gotta, then you gotta, but I can't breathe. I mean, I physically cannot afford to breathe in brown skin because it's inherently toxic. They say I'm worthless because brown skin is worthless and I can't breathe because I'm choking on my melanin skin. I can't breathe in all this American melanin skin because it's inherently toxic. They say I'm worthless because brown skin is worthless and I can't breathe because I'm choking on your suspicious expectations. Intentionalized some hatred I can't breathe. In this air that you claim was made for me and you don't care because this air was never made for me, can't you see? America, what you are doing to me, can't you see? You see LA, what you are doing to me mentally, physically. Emotionally, you're killing me. Cut, load, and shoot. Choke, hold, and boot. You're killing me. I can't breathe. I mean, I guess we was never supposed to breathe here in the first place. I mean, I guess this place was never meant to be our birthplace in the first place. But it's the best place and the worst place for us to be because it ain't nowhere in this world for us to breathe. We've been suffocating in this world since we crossed them seas. We come from a lineage of niggas who wasn't never supposed to breathe. Only supposed to breed young niggas who wouldn't leave past age 18 and now them same young niggas is killing them young niggas for the American dream. You see they chasing this high and losing their life until one day they realize that they wasn't never even breathing in the first place. We wasn't never even breathing in the first place. Can't breathe here. Can't breathe nowhere. Somebody tell me, where am I supposed to go? Somebody tell me, where is my home if I can't call this my America? I might as well take my own breath because y'all going to take that shit anyway. And dead or alive, I'm not breathing anyway. And then I hear this voice inside of me that's reminding me that I got to find breath in something. I got to find life in something. And knowing that if I can't breathe, then she can't breathe, and he can't breathe. But we got to breathe so we can be here. So we can reclaim our space and be free here. Because we deserve to breathe here. Because our fallen soldiers have fought for us to be here and breathe here, my people, we deserve to breathe here. And we will breathe here. And we will breathe here. Even with heavy hearts, we will breathe here. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Because we still deserve to breathe.
in this space, we're going to honor the lives that were lost. But we also honor the work and the continuous work that moves on with us and with our spirit as we move on with their spirit. And we carry their spirit as we continue the work of resistance, as we continue to fight for freedom. And we'll begin with saying the names of the lost loved ones. And you can feel free to add other people within this space so that we continue to remember those ancestors as well. And after we say each name, I would love if y'all can affirm and say Ashe behind it. Bunchy Carter. Ashe. John Huggins. Ashe. Sylvester Bell. Ashe. Walter T. Ray Pope. Ashe. Geronimo. Ashe. Uh, little Bobby Hutton. Ashe. Eldridge Cleaver. Ashe. Fred Hampton. Ashe. Uh, John Savage. Ashe. Uh, oh boy, so many of them. John Clark. Ashe. Ashe. Easy Money Harper. Ashe. Huey P. Newton. Ashe. Ashe. Malcolm X. Ashe. Ashe. Patrice Lumumba. Ashe. 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 Thomas Sankar. Ashe. Ashe. Tasha Haru. Ashe. 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 Malcolm X. Ashe. Ashe. Kathleen. Ashe. Michael Brown. Ashe. All the invisible trans and queer folks who have been killed all across, across the world. Ashe. Ashe. Yes. Arthur Johnson. Ashe. George Jackson. Ashe. Ashe. Jonathan Jackson. Ashe. Ashe. Robert Sabuque. Ashe. Ashe. James McLean. Ashe. Ashe. William H. Christmas. Ashe. Ashe. Melvin Lee. Ashe. Ashe. Austin Davis. Ashe. Dijon Shostari. Ashe. Stokely Carmichael. Ashe. Oscar Grant. Ashe. Che. Ashe. Sandra Bland. Ashe. And all of the brothers and sisters who lost their life throughout the black liberation struggle. Yes. Uh, Ashe. Ashe. All of them. Yes. And all those who dare yes. put their life on the line. Ashe. 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 Now we don't have to let this fire go out. You can, but let it still blaze within us. But you can rest your candle right here on our memory stone. 